right, folks. So this is the last piece of content for this class. So we're going to talk about time series, which is chapter 12 in the textbook. Um, and so the first questions are, what is a time series and why would we want to model a time series? So a time series is basically just a sequence of values, which are usually numeric, at uh, different points in time. So those points in time might be years or months or days. Um, they don't have to be evenly spaced, but it's easier if they are. And then the next question is, why would we model time series? And I think there's basically two reasons. One is uh, as a descriptive technique to know something about the world. And we've used models this way before, linear regression models uh, or logistic regression models. But, but then we often also want them for some inferential task. Um, and in this case, we want to make predictions and we want to make predictions about the future because this is data that has to do with time. And so the predictions that we're the most interested in are the ones that are in the future. For this lecture, I'm going to be using lots of examples. Um, one of them is about clothing expenditures. So this has data about the year. So I've got 1929, 1930, 1931, and then the sales of clothing in billions of dollars. So $9 billion, $7.8 billion, $6.7, etc. Um, and so we could think of this as a time series. Uh, and we could just think about these numbers, the sales uh, numbers, as the time series, because they're a series of values that were collected at time points. In this case, they were collected at evenly spaced time points of years. So we could use the year, 1929, 1930, 1931, or sometimes with time series, we'll have time points. So time point one, time point two, time point three, things like that. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to have a lot of in this lecture are plots. So uh, John Tukey is a famous statistician who I really like, and he has this quote, uh, the greatest value of a picture is when it forces us to notice what we never expected to see. So uh, Tukey was an advocate for doing exploratory data analysis. Part of exploratory data analysis is making lots of plots. And I think that um, time series is one of the places where that is extremely valuable. So let's just start by looking at a time series plot of that clothing expenditures data. And um, so this plot shows the time on the, uh, the x-axis, and then it's got the expenditures in the y direction. So we could think about that as t and then y sub t if we wanted to. Um, and looking at this plot, it looks like clothing expenditures are, are trending upward. And, uh, and what model might we fit? Well, so far, the models that we know about are linear regression, we know about ANOVA and logistic regression, and I think the one that uh, would be the most relevant from the tools that we already have is linear regression. Maybe we could fit a straight line through this data. So I'm going to start talking about uh, section 12.1, and 12.1 is about variations on linear models. So let's just pretend that all we have available to us is linear regression, and we're going to try and adapt it to help us model some time series data. So here's my clothing expenditures uh, example. And so I could try and predict the sales uh, in billions based on the year. And then I would get um, a linear uh, model output where I'd have estimates like this. So I could write out my uh, equation, um, which would be y hat is equal to negative 8458 plus 4.3 times year. And so then I could say things like for a one year increase, we would expect a 4.3 billion, and I guess I'll put the dollar sign in front, 4.3 billion dollar 
uh, increase in expenditures. Um, we could also have used that uh, time step as the predictor. So that was the T uh, variable in my data set. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get it so that you can see it. Um, so, oh man. Uh, so I could have fit sales.b tilde t, and I would have gotten um, basically the same thing. I would get a slightly different intercept because um, uh, it would be in terms of t versus in terms of years, but the slope is gonna be exactly the same. So with uh, linear regression, it doesn't matter if I use the original year or if I use that t variable. And I could plot the fit. So I've tried throughout this uh, slideshow to use blue to show my model lines. Um, so the blue line here is my model line. And uh, you know, it sort of looks like it matches the data. Uh, but of course, then we also would want to look at our residual plot. And when we're doing time series plots, we don't just plot points, uh, we connect them together from one time point to the next. So this is a residual versus fitted plot, but instead of having all of the dots, uh, I, I've connected the points together with a line. Um, so I can think of this residual plot as a time series plot as well. Uh, so these are my fitted values. Basically, that's over time. Um, and, and I'm looking at, uh, at, the, um, at the residuals as a time series. So this looks like it is violating, uh, you know, we've got our L, I, and E conditions when we think about linear regression. Uh, this does not look linear. There's clearly some curvature in our residual versus fitted plot. So um, the next idea that we have for using linear regression is, well, maybe we could do some type of like quadratic fit. So we talked about this uh, when we were doing um, linear regression. We talked about using the poly function to fit polynomials of a particular degree. So I could fit a degree equal to polynomial. That would be kind of a quadratic fit. Uh, remember, we don't have nice ways to interpret those coefficient estimates, uh, but we could use this to make predictions. And again, let's look at the picture. So now if I look at the blue model line, it looks like it's fitting the data a lot better. Um, uh, but we might also want to look at the residuals and it still seems like there is some pattern in the residuals. It's maybe not uh, you know, clear curvature anymore, but there's clearly something going on with the residuals. There's some trend, um, and we don't want that to be happening in our residual versus fitted plot. Uh, 